Dr. Rigoberto Delgado is the executive director and co-founder of the National Immigrant Farming Initiative. NIFI was initiated by a joint effort of Heifer International, USDA RMA, and Kellogg Foundation in response to the growing numbers of experienced immigrants, refugee farmers, and farm workers in the USA. Dr. Delgado's academic background includes a PhD in extension and adult education with minors in rural sociology and international agriculture and a master's degree in extension education with a minor in communications, both degrees from Cornell University in New York. He also has a Bachelor of Science degree in agronomy from College of Agriculture Hermanos Escobar, where he returned to teach sociology and community development and coordinated the Inter-American Science and Humanities program with the University of Texas at El Paso before joining Heifer International in 1999. Dr. Delgado has been in the USA Southwest Program Manager with Heifer International for 12 years, overseeing and developing many projects in the colonias along the Texas-Mexico border. Dr. Delgado is a native of the border region. He grew up in New Mexico. He cared for all types of animals, from chickens to goats to pigs, a dairy cow and rabbits on his family farm. As well as his very busy career, he has also devoted considerable time and resources to adapting organic agricultural practices to the harsh conditions of the desert southwest. Delgado Farms is one of the first Hispanic-owned farms in Texas to be certified organic. The principles of sharing and caring while helping farmers and their families to help themselves have guided his personal and professional commitments. Today, he will share with us the contributions of immigrants, refugee farmers, and farm workers to rural development. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Rigoberto Delgado. Good morning, uh, and welcome to the last day of the conference. So uh, I know that you're all tired, and I'll try to be brief. And I don't think I'll have a problem with the interpreters. Uh, because I always speak very slow anyway, so bear with me. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk a little about the National Immigrant Farming Initiative that was founded in 2002, because we saw the great importance that immigrant farmers have in this country. We saw the census and noticed that we were losing farmers for several reasons. For one, the farmers are aging and According to the census, the last census and the one we saw back in 2002, we were aging and our kids don't want to follow the footsteps of the parents. The average in the last census of the small farmers is 57 years of age. And then the 75 years and older farmers are retiring and they grew on 20% while their children and the younger generation decrease on 30%. Women increase also in 30%, which is great to have women managing the, the, the rural and the urban agriculture. While the number of operators, I said, uh, decreasing 30, the young generation, 
in around the country, family farms and small scale uh, operations face unprecedented uh, challenges, as you know, uh, in the struggle for viability and a place in contemporary agriculture. You know that failure for farmers and foreclosures are far too common and we're losing our farmers. Family farms are disappearing. In a way, uh, as uh, Ms. Michelle Sherman explained, I'm the exception to the rule because my kids have taken over the farm while I'm doing my job as the executive director of NIFI. Some estimates indicate that one third to half of all the farms in the country will see the principal operator retire within the next 10 years. And the question remains, where are we gonna replace them with? So, who's growing our food nowadays? The growing farming and ranching population, as we saw in 2002, is the refugees, are the immigrant farmers, and the farm workers. As you know, 70% of the farm workers were born abroad. So that also speaks to the importance of our farm workers that are producing our food. And most of the immigrant farmers and refugees come with an experience in farming from their countries. And they come with a dream and passion that we find to them to have throughout the US of becoming farmers themselves. Likewise, the farm workers also would like in most cases to transition to farmers. And in many success stories, we see that as they learn the methodology from the Asian family farmers, they replace them as they retired. So that's another growing sector that we also uh, work with. So for those of us that care about food security, food safety, family farms, and social justice, we see an opportunity to support those new and beginning farmers in this country, the new American farmers. And we know that the history of this country is based on immigrants. So it's repeating itself, as we see. But as they come with expertise in agriculture, our system is not easy to understand. So one of the missions that we have is to explain by training the new immigrants on our programs. What do they need? They need land for one, capital, credit, training, advocacy, because in many instances, they don't speak English or we speak it with an accent. And although they're educated, we don't consider them. We more tend to think that they're ignorant because they don't speak English without an accent. So those are the things that stereotype our immigrants and refugees. And we are advocating for them so that they can fit into our system. What does NIFI do? For one, we do training. We do 
training by and planning by participatory ways and methods. That, that means that out of a collection of persons, immigrant persons mostly, but we also are open to minorities in general, uh, we facilitate the process by which they name their own project, they tell us about their expectations, and we facilitate the process for them to, based on those expectations, develop them into measurable objectives. And after that, we know that everything has rules. Even the football game or baseball game, you need to have rules. So they next, based on their aspirations, begin to develop their own bylaws and name, once they have that in place, their representatives for that particular group. And because they already have their objectives in place and their goal, then what do you need in order to accomplish each one of those objectives? And then once you have what activities, who's going to do it, how they're going to do it, we move on to have their uh, budget. How much money do you need for each one of those activities, for each one of those objectives? And based on that, they come out with a budget. At one point, at the beginning, they also vision themselves. How do they want to be five years from now? And based on that, they put together a vision of their, of their work together. In that process, they develop, for one, ownership, because they put a name to their project. It's not NIFI. It's nobody else but themselves. They are, they're the owners. In many cases, they have not belonged to a group before. So they develop that sense of belonging among themselves. And so they own it. They put their own rules. And that's why they're in the way to successful farming. Training begins even before we approve the project for funding. That's essential as they develop. We also do one-to-one -one advice on how to navigate the system. Sometimes it's the USDA or other sponsors and, do, and help them do the paperwork. NIFI does not do what people can do for themselves because we, put, we try to help them to get in the direction of self-sufficiency. That's why. We also promote regional project partners meetings. We call the, the farmers our projects, our partners, because that's one of the partnerships. But on the other side, we also build partnerships with other institutional uh, uh, groups, like extension agent in almost every county that we work with. With, uh, with Minnesota Food Association is one of our partners. And so by building those partners, even in the, when we work in counties where in the Navajo Nation, just to give you an example, or the Northeast, uh, we also partner with the institutional, like the Department of Agriculture, like the, in, in the case of the Navajos, we also partner with, uh, with their Department of Agriculture. And so, because that way, together, we can make a, a bigger impact than doing the things by ourselves. Oh, but I forgot to mention that we promote those regional meetings so that the people from one 
county can come and visit to another community and exchange the knowledge that they receive during the year. So that's why we make it annual. And you know that in many instances, just getting the people together like in this conference, we learn new things. Some from the presenters, but also from other participants to the conference. So that's an important way of uh, sharing for each other and experiences, and then get to know each other and build up friendship among our partner uh, immigrant and, and minority farmers. Farm tours are, are another way to facilitate the training. So we also promote and fund uh, that type of activities because we know that they go and get other experiences and new ideas that come back and implement them in their own operation. The integration of animals, as, po uh, as you saw, my background as a child was just raising chickens and feeding pigs and you name it, right? So if the family can do vegetables and produce their own and in improve their nutrition, their diet, why not add to that chickens? And we saw the advantage of it in some of the, of the presentations yesterday by which you can fertilize your soil and, and, and increase your soil and the quality of it with chickens and then control pests and also uh, keep the weeds down. So they, they bring the eggs. So if the family sells sufficient in eggs and later has surplus to sell to other neighbors, that's an in extra income. Some others, as part of their culture, they have goats. Sometimes, like in this case, meat goats, and also dairy goats or sheep so they can also produce their own milk and do cheese. So that integration of animals to vegetable gardening and agriculture I think is very important. As you can see, the family together come on Saturday in that particular project and process their, their chickens. And it's interesting to see the kids helping out the parents and how formal and they come and, and check a, a time card and begin to peel off the little the feathers that were left by the father or their parents uh, uh, out of that, uh, that chicken and pass it on to their moms. So the, the family is a unit of development for us. We also do some of the annuals this is an example uh, in Eugene, uh, uh, Oregon. And, and the leader of the project, Margarito, is also a very dedicated immigrant farmer. While awareness, awareness is growing about the importance of saving farmland and keeping farmers on the land, uh, we still are losing land to development, and it's an, an, an alarming rate. Just to give you an example, we are losing more than an acre of, of farm land every minute of every day. Texas alone lost more than two million acres of farm ranches, of farms, ranches, and forest land during the, the last 25 years. If we continue this trend, some regions of the country will lose the last acre of farm land by 2060. Now this is another uh, pilot project that we have with the farm workers that are transitioning to farming. This is, uh, the project is in, in Felsmere in Florida. And so it's been very successful. Last month we came 
to integrate, open a farmer's market for the, for the families in Felsmere. So that's another success, a story that we're, that we're cultivating. And of course, working with immigrant farmers is such a rewarding experience. And, and we even get paid for doing it. So that's the other advantage of it, you see. Uh, and I, I know that you're tired. I don't want to prolong my talk too much. And, and I sure appreciate the invitation and, and the introduction of, of Mrs. Michelle Sherman. And, and to be introduced by her, it's, it's also a rewarding experience because she is a very well-known person and she is part of the, of the university and she's a horticulturalist and, and nurse. And, and experiencing health issues, so it combines the two things. So thank you very much for having me, and if there, there are any questions, I'm gonna be around. Thank you.